بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم بچوں ویلکم ٹو دا نیکسٹ لیکچر دا آنسرز آف دا چیلنج ٹیسٹ آف ویڈیو نمبر 11 ول بی پرووائڈیڈ ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دس کلپ 1 سم ویوز ار میکینیکل وی ہیو اسٹیبلشڈ دس فیکٹ ان دا بیل جار آپریٹرز کوسچن ناؤ وی ول چیک ویدر دے ار لانگیٹیوڈنل اور ٹرانسورس دس از ا ٹیوننگ فورڈ دس از دا پوزیشن مین پوزیشن او This is A and this is B, the extreme positions. These are the layers of air molecules which are adjacent to this prong of the tuning fluid. Right now you can see that gap between all the layers is same. So the density of the air which is next to the tuning fluid is uniform right now. and also the tuning fork is at rest it is not vibrating now if we strike the tuning fork on the rubber pad it will start to produce sound and it will also start its vibrations it will move from mean position o to the extreme position b when it will be moving like this what it will do it will press these layers of air which were on its right side now what will be the situation this will be the situation next to the tuning fork what will happen to the density of air the layers of air will come closer together this will be a compression this prong will compress the layers of air molecules to produce a compression as the prongs of the tuning fork vibrate in order to produce the sound now after moving to this point it will start coming back to the mean position and through the mean position to the point a as you know that the prong should vibrate like this when it will be moving away it will create a gap over here now what will happen these layers of air will be having more space they will spread when they will spread there will be more gaps between the layers of air molecule when they will be with more gaps the pressure of air will become less this less air pressure creates a rarefaction so this tuning fork will keep on vibrating back and forth and a series of compressions and rarefactions will be generated which will be moving continuously from this portion to the outer layer or outer environment now these series of compressions and rarefactions tells us that sound is longitudinal in nature also the distance between two consecutive rarefactions or compression is equal to the wavelength loudness is the characteristic of sound by which we dis- differentiate between loud sound and faint sound we have to talk in different ways at different places according to the social situation for example if you are having a talk with your friends or you are talking to your uh, relatives in your homes your voice is low but if you have to address a public gathering for example you are going for a speech or for example i as a teacher i have to deliver a lecture in the class then the voice should be loud first i will discuss that how amplitude of the vibrating body affects the loudness of sound more the amplitude of the vibrating body more will be the loudness of sound for example if you plug the strings of the sitar and you plug them with less amplitude you will get a low sound but if you uh, plug the strings more violently the sound will be loud 
सेम इज द केस विद द ड्रम इफ यू स्ट्राइक द ड्रम विद लेस फोर्स विद लेस एम्पलीट्यूड द ड्रम्स वॉइस विल बी नॉट दैट मच लाउड बट इफ यू स्ट्राइक द ड्रम हार्डर एंड द सर्फेस वाइब्रेट्स विद द मोर एम्पलीट्यूड यू विल गेट अ लाउड साउंड नेक्स्ट वन इज योर ओन साउंड बॉस काइंडली पुट योर हैंड्स ऑन योर थ्रॉट वेन यू विल बी टॉकिंग इन अ नॉर्मल टोन the vibrations that you feel on your hand are small but if you begin to shout and your voice become loud you can feel that the vibrations in the in your hands there which are felt are more louder also let me show you with the help of waveform this is sound number 1 this is sound number 2 if you look at this sound you uh, check out the amplitude of the wave this is the amplitude of the wave in this sound this is the amplitude of the wave so this will be a loud sound and this will be a quiet sound area of the vibrating body also affect the loudness of sound more the area more the loudness smaller drum produce quiet sound and bigger drum drums produce loud sound tuning fork when it is uh, when we strike it on a rubber pad it will produce a feeble sound but if we strike it on a table it will produce a bigger sound because the rubber pad is small and the table is big now let me show you one practical example as well this is a book it is smaller than the board now first i will can you hear the sound now let us strike the book with the same stick with same force and see how the sound is so as you can see that the board was big so we heard a bigger sound but the book was small so the sound heard was small so the area of the vibrating body also affect loudness the next factor that affects the loudness is the distance from the vibrating body if the distance increases the loudness will decrease for example right now i am very near to the mobile i am the vibrating body and through mobile you are listening my sound if i start moving away from the mobile now my sound will become less and the loudness of my sound will decrease but if again i start moving towards the mobile the loudness of my sound will increase and you can clearly understand the difference with the help of this simple experiment condition of fear is another uh, factor which affect the loudness uh, young people listen to the sound in a different way old people listen to the same sound in a different way a sound which is loud for a young one may appear to be a faint one for the old one so as people grow older their ability to listen decreases their physical condition of ear uh, changes so that's why sometimes they use the hearing devices also it depends upon the natural abilities there are some people who have very uh, sharp sense of hearing they can hear the sounds very clearly even if the sound is very low on the other hand there are some people who are not that much sharp in listening the sounds and the same sound appears louder to a person with sharp ears as compared to other people next characteristic of sound wave is pitch pitch is a characteristic to differentiate between a shrill and grave sound what is a shrill sound like the sound of women and kids that is shrill what is a grave sound like the sound of men they are grave what is the physical quantity which creates this difference the quantity that changes or relates to the pitch is frequency shrill sounds have more frequency grave sounds have 
less frequency if you look at the waveform uh, now you can see that this is a smaller wave so it more number of waves can be uh, there in a second as compared to the longer waves if the wave is long less number of waves will be there in one second so this is more frequency this is less frequency this is a shrill sound and this is a grave sound let me show you the shrill and the grave sounds with the help of the fan. Uh, right now I am turning on the fan. Initially the uh, frequency of the fan is less. You can see the grave sound. Uh, see? But now if I increase the frequency the sound will become shrill. This is one of uh, a little experiment at the DIY experiment you can do a lot of other experiments to check out the same characteristic what is quality of sound if two sounds have same loudness and same pitch still we can identify them because of their different waveforms for example if inside a room two people are talking they are talking with the same loudness they have the same pitch still they have their original waveforms both can be differentiated from one another the last characteristic of sound wave is intensity intensity by definition is the energy per second flowing through a unit area which is held perpendicular to the direction of waves. If these are the sound waves, then the area will be perpendicular to the sound waves. Uh, the factor of the wave which represents or which affects the intensity is amplitude. More the amplitude, more intensity of the wave. The unit of intensity is there as it is a physical quantity and can be measured accurately. The unit is watt per meter square. The difference between the loudness of unknown sound and the loudness of the faintest audible sound is called intensity level of sound. Let L be the loudness of any unknown sound and L0 is the loudness of the faintest audible sound that can be heard by a human ear. Now by definition, intensity level of sound is the difference between the loudness of an unknown sound and the loudness of the barely audible sound is known as intensity level. Uh, this expression can be called as the mathematical form of the definition of intensity level. Ear can listen to a big range of values of intensities of sound waves. The least sound that a human ear can understand is 10 power minus 12 watt per meter square and the maximum it can listen to any value which is more than 1 watt per meter square. This is a very large range. This uh, particular value which is faintest intensity or the barely, barely audible sound is called as zero bell. It is represented by I naught is equal to 10 power minus 12 watt per meter square. You people uh, have to learn this constant. This is named as zero bell uh, after the famous physicist Alexander Graham Bell. Now uh, if you look at this value, if I convert this scientific notation into a usual number then it is 0 0.00000000001 watt per meter square that is very small and 1 watt meter per square is a very big value this is a very wide range so the scale is uh, made by a factor of 10 for example if first value is 10 the next value is 10 multiplied by 10 that is 100 the next value is 100 multiply by 10 that is 1000 etc. Let us take any sound which is having a loudness of L 
and intensity of I. Loudness and intensity are related as loudness is directly proportional to log of I. Convert the proportionality into equality then L is equal to K log I. Let us mark it as equation number 1. Second sound that we will take is faintest audible sound. The faintest audible sound has a loudness L0 and intensity I0. So similarly like as in 1 L0 will be equal to K log I0. Now by definition what is intensity level of sound? I have told you L minus L0 is the intensity level of sound. So, to get this formula, we have to subtract equation 2 from equation 1 to get L minus L naught. On the right side, it will be K log I minus K log I naught. Now, K can be taken common. We will get log I minus log I naught inside. After that, we will apply the division rule or the subtraction rule of the logarithm on these two values as two logs are subtracted so they can be written as a log of a fraction log i minus log i naught will be equal to log i by i naught next step is we have to calculate the value of the proportionality constant k now in order to calculate the value of the proportionality constant k first i am writing in test level is equal to k log i by i naught that is equation 3 i am writing again now let us Assume that the unknown sound intensity is 10 times the faintest audible sound. Then intensity level is set to be 1 bell. Now let us put the values of I and intensity level over here. Now instead of this intensity level, what we will write? We will write 1 bell is equal to K log. Instead of this I, what I will put? I is equal to 10 I naught. So here it becomes 10 I naught divided by I naught. In the next step, this I naught will be cancelled with this I naught. I will be getting 1 bell is equal to K log 10. Now log 10 is by definition 1. You can calculate it from the calculator as well. 1 bell is equal to K. Or value of the proportionality constant is found to be 1 bell. Now what we will do? We will put this value of k that is 1 bell in equation number 3. It will become intensity level is equal to instead of k put the value 1 bell log i by i naught. Now, uh, now take this name of the unit to the end. So 1 will remain here. You write it or not it doesn't matter. It will become log i by i naught bell we got of the formula was intensity level is equal to log i by i naught bell. One bell is a very big physical quantity instead of taking that big physical quantity we describe that in one bell there are 10 decibels. So instead of this one bell we put in for 10 dB. Take this number to the start. The, the final form of intensity level formula is 10 log i by i naught db. This formula will be used in numericals. You must memorize it very well. i naught is a constant that is 10 raised to the power minus 12 watt per meter square. You scale can be constructed using the intensity levels of sound. Such a scale is known as a decibel scale. Reflection of sound definition is when sound is incident on the surface of a medium, it bounces back into the first medium. This is called reflection of sound. Now or let echo. us check what is the condition to hear a clear echo. Our mind can uh, contain a sound inside it for 0 0.1 second. If the sound will come after reflection within this 0 0.1 second, it will mix with the original sound. But if the sound comes after, the reflected sound comes after 0 0.1 second to our ear, then we can hear it separately from the original one. 
The speed of the sound under the no normal condition uh, is 340 meter per second. According to the formula S is equal to VT, we have 340 into 0.1, we get S is equal to 34 meter. So the sound must cover at least 34 meters before coming back to our ear for a clear echo and if it is to be distinguished from the original sound. So if I show you, this is the reflecting wall. So uh, this total distance, this double distance should, should be equal to 34 meter. The sound must cover 34 meter in this round trip. So what will be the uh, distance between the source and the wall? It should be half of that distance. That is S by 2 that is 17 meter. In order to hear the clear echo, the distance between the source of sound and the reflecting surface should be at least 17 meters. And if there are more than one uh, reflecting surfaces available around us, then we can hear the successive or multiple echoes. These echoes are most clearly uh, heard whenever we clap in an empty room and near a tall building or in the valleys, the multiple reflections can also occur. So, uh, let's